what we're going to look at now is force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So we have force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. Now, this is normally known as the motor effect because this force that acts on a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field is used in motors. When you find motors everywhere, you probably use it just for the weekend, your washing machine, your hairdryer, even your hard drive on your computer has got a little electric motor in, uh, your PlayStation, anything that turns basically an electrical device that turns will use the motor effect. So here we are. So what we're just going to do is going to have a little bit of a look at the theory behind this. So what we've got then is if we take a wire, I'm just going to draw a bit of wire down here, and we make one end positive and the other one negative, what will happen is we will have a flow of current. So what we're going to do is going to call this conventional current. So in this case, it's going to go positive to negative. So we've got a flow of current there. Now, when this current flows through the wire, we have moving charges. Those electrons are our moving charges. And what that means is those moving charges will establish a magnetic field. around the wire, as proved by Ofsted's experiment, when he placed a compass over a wire, and he connected the wire to two terminals of a power supply, and he passed a current through it, and the compass moved. And what he found was that the magnetic field, or the compass, it deflected, and it moved to 90 degrees. So, taking this a step further, what we can do then is we can investigate this magnetic field. So, if we take a sheet of paper, card or whatever, and we, let's say, wire here, and we connect it up. Let's say we have, or well, just to make it easier, we'll go with positive at the bottom and negative at the top. What we'll have is we will have current moving up this wire. Now, what will happen is we will have a magnetic field around this wire at 90 degrees. In fact, if you sprinkle iron filings onto this sheet of paper, what you can see is that, that magnetic field forms concentric circles around the wire. Now, if you take it a step further and place a plotting compasses, place plotting compasses around here, what you can see is that when you flip the direction that the current flows in, the plotting compasses will turn round. Now, at the moment, the actual direction of the magnetic field is anti-clockwise. If we were to take the situation and reverse the flow of current, make this negative and that positive. So our current is going from, our conventional current is going from positive to negative. You'll find, again, is you have concentric lines so in a concentric a circular magnetic field at right angles to our wire and in this case it will be flowing in the opposite direction the magnetic field would have the direction which is clockwise 
Now you can determine this direction using Maxwell's or the right hand grip rule if you, can, if you like. So you take your right hand, okay, you put, point your thumb up like so, and you take a grip as if you were gripping the wire. So in this case, pen's the wire, okay, I grip pen point my finger up. So what this means then, is if we turn that on there, you can see that the this is positive, this is negative, current's going positive to negative, and as you can see on here, the direction of the current is determined by the direction of your thumb, and the direction of the magnetic field is determined by which way your fingers are pointing. And in this case, they are moving in a badly drawn but never mind in a anti-clockwise direction on our second example the current moves down uh, now if you look at the direction you can see that it is clockwise if you the direction that my thing is pointing in it is clockwise Okay, it's indicated there. So now taking this one step further, then because we've got a magnetic field around this wire, what can actually say we can place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, and the two magnetic fields will interact. So let's do that then. What we'll do is we'll take that side there, put that here. So, I'll label this up in a moment. So then, as we have, okay, let's say a north pole here and a south pole. Okay, so a magnetic field. Well, that flows from north to south. Now I'm drawing a uniform magnetic field in there, so it's the same throughout. Now the magnetic field here. I'm going to show the direction north to south there. Put my arrows there. You'll see why in a moment. Place my arrows there. North to south. Now, if we've got a current carrying conductor in here, then I was to place this from a side, a cross section, then this is what you'll see. Dot. Now, what we have then is what we call dot and cross diagrams. So. Just so that we can identify the direction of current, we use dot and cross. What you've got to do is you've got to imagine yourself with a dart coming towards you. So a dart will generally look like, okay, have a point there, and then you've got feathers at the back. Now, if this was coming towards you, you would see the point here, and then the barrel there. If it was moving away from you, what you would see is you would see the feathers like that. So what we say then, this is moving towards you, so that's out of the paper. This is moving away, so this is into paper. So in our particular example then, what we're going to do is we will say that it is out of the paper. So if this is out of the paper, then what we can do is we can use our right hand rule. So what we're doing is we're placing a current carrying conductor, a wire, in a magnetic field. You can see it here. 
on the worksheet that hopefully moved on to in your booklet. You can see this in two dimensions. In fact, it's pretty much it's exactly the same, really. I'm just doing the cross section. You've got north to south, you've got your magnetic field here, and then you've got your current coming from left to right out of the paper, if you like. So pretty much the same. Now, what will happen to the current carrying conductor here is that it will experience a force and that force will cause it to move. Now that force is due to the interaction between the magnetic field between the North and South Pole and the magnetic field that is established around the current carrying conductor when you turn the switch on. So, current carrying conductor, current is coming out of the page using Maxwell's right hand screw rule, what we've got, or the right hand grip rule, what we've got is coming out of the page pass, that thumb up, that means the magnetic field is going in an anti-clockwise direction. So let me draw this in anti-clockwise direction. And I'm going to draw one, I'm going to put an arrow on there, and I'm going to draw another here, and I'm going to draw Another. Yeah, I'm going to put arrows on. Yeah, to show the direction. Now, what we can see then here, if we start to look at this, well, a magnetic field is a vector. That's a magnitude and direction, the direction, in this case, north to south. This magnetic field set up by the current around the current carrying conductor also has a field, and you can see here that this one, mark it off in red, is in the same direction as the one around the current carrying conductor. So I'm going to place them like that. So what we've got then is we have got a more dense magnetic field here. More dense magnetic field. Up at the top here, what we've got then is we've got a magnetic field north to south, and we have our magnetic field around our current carrying conductor. If you look at the direction, anti-clockwise, uh, it's anti-clockwise, that means it's going in that direction here. What this means then is that at the top, we have a less dense magnetic field. So, what will happen then is that this current carrying conductor, well, this will now move out of oops, the field in that direction through less dense magnetic field. Now, that force. that's acting and moving it out is due to three variables. The actual magnetic field strength between north and south of the magnet, given the symbol B, measured in Teslas, multiplied by the current flowing through the wire, multiplied by the length of the wire that is in the magnetic field. Oh. And this, this equation here, allows us to work out any of these four variables, provided we've got the other three, but in particular, the force acting on the wire. Now, this explains why the current carrying conductor 
will move in a certain direction. Fleming's left hand rule okay, will actually give us a nice little shorthand way of trying to remember where the Y is going to move. Okay, and we've got to remember here he's going to use your left hand rule, left hand, sorry. And what we've got is we've got some first thing, a second thing, and we need to have each one at right angles, like so. You've got your thumb, first finger, second finger, all at right angles to each other. And what you've got then is you have, I remember this, like Manchester Football Club. Thumb tells you the movements of the current, current carrying conductor, which way it will go in. Manchester Football, well, that tells you the direction of the field. Club, Manchester Football Club, that tells you the direction of the current. So manipulating this, what you can do is you can determine which way the actual wire goes. So let's try with that, our example then. So north to south, so Manchester football field. So we've got movement, field, current, that's field. So field is going north to south, so it's going that way. Okay, now the current is actually moving out of the paper. Up. And you can see quite clearly now that the thumb is pointing upwards, which is the what, which is the way that the actual wire moves. Okay, so you'll need to practice with that, and get used to that, particularly if you're going to do A level physics. We'll come across all this again in year 13. So, oh. 